Hello and welcome to our Mobile Viewpoint webinar. Um, today we'll be talking about uh, PTZ cameras um, and with, uh, well, as more manufacturers uh, and our customers are looking for integrated solutions, we're very pleased to welcome our guest today, Stephen Cogs, uh, Kogel sorry, from Avonic. Hello, Stephen. Um, Stephen, perhaps you could start, just uh, introduce yourself. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thanks, uh, thanks, Mark. Um, yeah, so my name is Stephen Coles. I'm the sales manager for uh, Avonica, uh, a Dutch-based company, and we uh, manufacture and uh, design PTZ and fixed cameras uh, for, I would say, the space between uh, Pro AV applications and the real broadcast applications. Uh, so very cost-effective uh, solutions with a high uh, value for money uh, um, uh, as a uh, as a design uh, starting point. Great. Uh, All right, Steve. Thanks for that and, and, and yeah. welcome. Um, by way of introduction, my name is Mark Andrews. I'm a global sales manager here at uh, Global Viewpoint. Michelle, would you like Yes. To Hi, I'm Michel Bais, uh, Managing Director of Mobile Viewpoint, and I'm here together with Mark uh, to talk with you about the PTZ cameras and also with the help of Stephen, we hope we can learn you something about what's available and what you can do with PTZ cameras. Great. Just by way of housekeeping, um, Everybody's on mute, so feel free to make as much noise as you like. Um, at the end, the plan is I'm going to talk for five, ten minutes, uh, and then I'm going to pass it over to Steve, Stephen. Um, and then at the end, we're going to have a quick live Q&A session. So if you do have questions, feel free just to write them in the Q&A box. You can write them as you go along. It's fine. And then we just pick them up at the end. So I'm going to start by sharing my screen. I have a quick PowerPoint to share. So, just by setting the scene, PTZ cameras. Michelle, I'll ask you the question first, perhaps. Um, yes. We talk about cameras. What's, yes. What's, when I talk about PTZ cameras, how do you position that in the market when compared to other cameras? Perhaps? Ah, you see, of course, that PTC get, uh, cameras are more and more used these days when you make specific type of, of, of programs. It, though, I think uh, first dates is a format you see almost worldwide with people sitting in a restaurant environment and dating with each other. And then you see those PTZ cameras appearing close to them, but they don't notice them, so they keep on talking. And I think actually that Big Brother, the first reality uh, show, we know it, was having the, the same setup. So over there, everywhere there were cameras, and the people hardly notice them anymore, also start more freely talking. And the benefit these days with PTZ cameras is that they're really remote controllable. So you don't use a joystick or the remote control close to it, but now you can really remotely, miles away, you can really control a camera with somebody on site. And especially now with COVID, it's very hard to travel to somebody to set a camera up. Because now you can just send them the camera and then ask them just to put it on the table and that you remotely set it up, including also with the V-Pilot as we use today. That's also completely remote controllable. So people can set it up themselves and with the help from back home with PTZ commandos, commands, you can really uh, finalize the setup with a PTZ camera. So it's really flexible. Yeah. And broadcast quality as well. And yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, I think uh, most PTZ cameras we know from the and the, the, baby, the baby care type of cameras, the very small ones from 20 euros. But also these are PTZ cameras from a very, no, yeah, much, much more expensive, but a much higher quality as well. And they are yeah, close to high-end uh, cameras. Of course, they have the limitations, but I think uh, what we want to do with it today, especially for webcasting and those interviews from home. So this is the alternative to an iPhone, and this is really better. So uh, yeah. People wanted to do truly professional uh, productions and remote productions. So as a, as a company, for those of you who don't know Mobile Viewpoint, um, we're a Dutch-based company. We're based about 20 kilometers north of Amsterdam. And since 2008, we've been specializing in sort of encoders for outside broadcast uh, for live productions. And very much in use by news gathering teams, sports production, and other people doing live events. Obviously, over the last few months, uh, a lot more people are now working from home. Um, and as a consequence of that, we've actually been developing our home uh, live streaming solution, which actually what we have here on display, known as Trolley Live. Perhaps, Michelle, you could just talk, a little, talk us through a little bit about what we have showing here in terms of the Trolley Live solution. Yeah, yeah the, the problem is, of course, that uh, we talk together. Then, uh, you have to talk together and we get an overview shot you can see. But this is actually Trolley Live. It's a foldable solution. Uh, I hope people can see it, but actually it can fold in. Perhaps you could bring it into the... Yeah, yeah there we are. So you see, and um, <laughs> something you should appear. But you can flip it out. So now that you see the Avonic camera on top, and then up, 
with me. So here you see it. And uh, the idea is that you really can send it out. So it has an, uh, it's very easy to carry around. But I'll flip it in once more so we can see it happening. So you can do it like this. And then you see there is a carry in the, yeah, a handle on the top. Actually, you can remove it. And then there can be the remote control and the power uh, source of the unit. And the good thing to know is that it also has an, a battery connector on the back. So actually, you can do it battery powered. Sure. In fact, we have two types of trolley life. So we have the main one in a box here that we're showing. Um, but also, many of our customers, you know, they, they may already have their own PTZ cameras. They may have their own screen. So we actually have the screen and built and everything as well in this. So if you're doing, uh, if you want a return video or a teleprompt, then we can show that on the screen as well. Yeah. Um, but people also have their own screen, they have their own camera, and they want to sort of make their own trolley live. So we actually have a, what we call a DIY version where we can have one of our rack encoders, again, for live streaming, um, which can live stream not just over the, the LAN or the internet, but also over the mobile network as well. So one of our strengths is the ability to bond together multiple 4G networks. And again, as a mobile encoder, very reliable, uh, very low latency, um, and you know it's it, it's giving broadcast quality, no drop frames. And, and, and totally sort of live is really the integration version of the day you do it yourself. So yep. the do it yourself is already used by quite a lot of customers, but we decided to really make it in one integrated product to make it more easy to ship and also easier to set it up. So there is no cabling. You can just, as I showed you, connect the battery on the back of the unit, and then uh, yeah, your your talent can go live without having to connect anything else than a microphone. And Stephen will be pleased to hear this is a, an Avonic camera that we have. Yeah, we here. did especially select Avonic camera for this product because it, it has to meet specific requirements. So high quality, but also not too expensive again. And also, yeah, it's something you have to keep in mind. If this box gets lost in the mail, then of course you, you want to not to lose too much money. And um, yeah, we think it's a very good combination of the product and the features. And I think Stephen will tell more about the specifics of this camera, but uh, we like it a lot, actually. Yeah, so here's... I was just aware we, we had our PowerPoint on there, but here's a bit of a, a, an animation showing what it's like. So we have the screen at the front there. We have the V... Uh, Fion battery plate yeah, on the back. On the back. Um, um, and it's all sort of self-contained. That's the point, really. It's all self-contained in a box. So all you need to do is ship this. Um, and the presenters, they're non-technical. So all they need to do is open it up, power it on. And actually, we have a remote management platform known as Link Matrix, where everything can be managed remotely. So again, you can go live, you can control the PTZ camera, yeah. you can basically do it. Including everything. the volume. So there's the yep. professional audio amplifier on the bottom, as you can see, and that it can be controlled by the talent with the, with the, but, with the, with the knots, with the buttons, but also remotely we can uh, control the volume as well. Yeah. And our uh, SIM cards as well, you can insert. So you can uh, connect up to four SIM cards in the unit. So you can also go live uh, when there is no fixed Ethernet or Wi-Fi available. Yeah, fabulous. So a bit about the rack as well. So again, it's just a, a normal rack controller. You could put this in your own box. Again, it's if you have your own equipment, it's just, a, again, a very low cost way of being able to do sort of live streaming, um, you know, re remotely. So not necessarily just from home, but also from, you know, offices and outdoor, wherever you need to be, really. Now, that's kind of me. The only other thing I was going to mention, actually, I'm going to go back. Uh, to the main video, stop my share screen. There we go. So hopefully you got a better view now of uh, the ViewPilot, uh, the ViewPilot of the um, of the Trolley Live. But I was just going to mention ViewPilot as well. So ViewPilot is our own AI platform where we basically use a lot of PTZ cameras to basically track the people. And in fact, this whole webinar here is being run by ViewPilot. So ViewPilot is for an automated studio setup. So actually what we have here, we actually have five cameras, four of which are PTZ cameras. And the point is if we're moving around, we have sensors and it can track us. But it also creates the director's shot as well. So the idea being it's sort of interesting, compelling viewing. Um, but the point is no people, no director. And again, in these times where we're trying to cut back on people in a small space, it's, it is ideal for that. But even going forward where people are looking to make budget productions within a studio, uh, webinars, podcasts, um, even corporates who are looking for a more of a, uh, a professional setup, we can use vPilot uh, uh, to provide that as well. So again, a, 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 a low cost effective way of making professional productions within a studio environment and taking full advantage of 
PTZ cameras. Yeah, I mean, actually, it already did several studios indeed with the Avonic cameras because people really like the quality and the yep. price of it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, we, so for us, Avonic are an important partner. And on that note, I'm going to pass over to Stephen. So, Stephen, hopefully you can uh, share your screen there. Yeah, I'll, I'll share my screen in a second. I, I, I think one thing I wanted to, uh, I wanted to, wanted to mention. I think the, what, what, what you've seen been seeing since two thousand eight about the, um, uh, like remote production uh, becoming more mobile and, and the focus on doing it more cost effective. Uh, I think one of the interesting things right now with uh, streaming uh, and esports and all these type of applications that are now popping up because of uh, COVID. Uh, the interesting thing is is that it's now more about quickly adopting to new technology. Uh, it, it seems like this whole thing that we're in uh, is really allowing people just to, to go and go out and do it instead of just thinking about it for years and years. Uh, so it's, it's creating a, for us, it's, it's creating uh, opportunities actually uh, right now for, uh, I would say the, the space between traditional broadcasting and the pro AV world, which is where exactly uh, these solutions that, that we're talking about uh, are positioned. Yeah, I think, I think you're right. And we, we're certainly seeing that a lot in remote production, in sports production, where the whole industry was gradually moving to a remote production setup. But by COVID, they've been sort of forced to sort of accelerate that program. And actually, they're doing things they never thought possible just by being forced out of that rut they were in and, and adopting a new technology and just trying it. And actually, it has proven to be quite successful. Over to you, Stephen. Okay. Um, just shared my screen, so I think that uh, that should be yeah. working now. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, just a, a little bit quick introduction about uh, Avonic. Uh, like I mentioned, we're, we're a Dutch-based company uh, founded about 13 years ago. Uh, we actually manufacture PTZ and fixed cameras and some accessories around that uh, that are being used in multiple markets. I uh, just wanted to give a little bit of an overview on that before we uh, look into some of the specifics which are in line with uh, the mobile viewpoint uh, offering and the way we combine our products. Uh, of course, we're, we're active in the broadcasting space. I would say uh, Michelle already mentioned that uh, from a positioning perspective, there's the, the high-end PTZ cameras. There's, of course, a very much a low-end, which is available online through web shops and all that kind of stuff. And then there's a big space in the middle. Uh, we're typically... Uh, I would say in that middle, we're really a little bit on the higher range, uh, but really where uh, good video quality is important, uh, reliability is important, uh, good support is important, uh, but still uh, prices are not at the premium broadcasting level. That's kind of where we play in that space. Uh, we're also active in a variety of other markets. Um, we just talked about uh, adapting new technology. One of the images here is House of Worship, so churches, We've seen an immense uh, ad uh, adaption of uh, streaming technology in churches, which is probably one of the most slow moving markets that we have, uh, but it is affecting that market as well. Um, we're active in conferencing, so large conferencing applications. So we're, we've been involved in uh, like the EU cre creation EU presidency. So all the registration that has been going on there has been done with Avonic cameras as well. Uh, of course, the video conferencing space, which is uh, a kind of out of this um, out of this scope for today, but also webcast and streaming, um, visual radio uh, applications, all those type of things. We're, we're active in all these markets. Um, yeah, right now, um, like I mentioned, it's, it's streaming is getting into a, um, uh, into really a, a snowball effect. Uh, everybody's kind of looking into this, all types of customers that I can at least think of. Uh, so then we're talking about online webinars uh, like this, for instance, are, are, are done more and more. Every company is doing these type of things. Uh, general online communication, research companies, uh, but also the event industry right now uh, is kind of forced to go online. Uh, they're really an offline type of industry, right? Uh, used to placing big LED screens and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but now they are forced to, to go online as well, which is a very interesting development. And I think especially in combination with, with, with things like vPilot, where uh, you want to create that broadcast experience, but there's not always these broadcast people that can actually make that happen. Um, so that's a, a very interesting development. Um, like I mentioned, these used to be true broadcast uh, setups, right? So the investments were, were way higher. I think PTZ cameras do have, uh, have had an effect. Uh, Big Brother was already mentioned. Uh, that was early stages. Uh, but PTZ cameras just simply, uh, they're not an alternative for a good cameraman uh, or woman. 
uh, they are uh, they are an addition. Uh, they are in a way where you would normally go in with like three fixed cameras. Uh, you would go in with multiple PTZ cameras. So in a setup that you mentioned uh, in your studio where there's five cameras, maybe normally you would just have like uh, two fixed cameras uh, in that location. So it's just enabling more instead of taking away from anything, it's enabling more. Um, and, and more and more software solutions like uh, the mobile viewpoint offering uh, are taking away from, from complex video mixers, title generators, green screen setups, uh, all those kind of things. So it's making things more accessible uh, in the general scope of things. Um, yeah, we, we've kind of already mentioned a little bit about the fully automated solution, the ones that uh, that you are using. Uh, happy to see the trolley live as well. Uh, and I know we've done uh, we've done a couple of uh, projects already. Uh, one of one of the ones I remember is the Maybucon one, which I think was a, a trade show where they actually went live and had a bunch of interviews with um, uh, with with industry experts uh, that just went uh, went on. I think for the full duration of the show. Uh, I think that those kind of developments are very, very interesting because normally that would have been a project with a very high budget. Um, one of the things that Michelle already mentioned, um, for remote production, uh, the remote control is very important. And PTZ cameras, by uh, default, always have the ability to be remote controlled. Um, uh, for a lot of the time, that has been serial-based. Uh, and now that's all uh, fully IP-based, which basically allows you to be wherever you want to be. Um, uh, and also allows uh, the, um, uh, the director to be in control of the camera on the far side, actually. Um, a couple of things about PTZ cameras in general. Um, uh, so they allow for pen, tilt, and zoom, um, but they also allow for things like automatic and, uh, and manual focus. So you do have full control over all these things, right? Uh, in, in case of a trolley live, it might be interesting to just put it on automatic uh, just to make sure that everything is in the picture. But if you want to have some type of other shot, there are opportunities to do manual focus, uh, all these kind of things. Uh, PTZ cameras are very easy to control in a way that you can also recall presets, so predefined scenarios, uh, and the small form factor of the camera itself. It fits inside of a trolley live box. So I think that's a little bit of proof that the size is, is relatively small. Uh, I put a couple of pictures in here. Uh, the Maybucon one is in there. Uh, the visual radio is one type of installation. Um, I think the positioning for Avonic uh, PTZ cameras really is in between where you would go for a high-end broadcast type camera and where you would go for a very small form factor uh, uh, fixed camera. Uh, there we add a lot of value and there we offer a lot of more flexibility uh, compared to fixed cameras. Um, a couple of things when, when looking at PTZ cameras in general, and they, those don't completely um, uh, are in line with what, what uh, the offering from mobile viewpoint is, but this is more general. Um, the room lighting is important. Um, um, uh, like simple working light uh, is not the same as studio light, we all know. Uh, but if you look at um, uh, journalists that dial in from their house or remote reporters that dial in or topic experts that dial in, uh, the lighting in their, in their house is not optimal. So uh, really need to look at uh, the, the lighting conditions and the way cameras behave when they have uh, lower lighting than what would normally be expected in a studio. Because a studio camera and a general purpose camera, I would say, uh, are two different things. Of course, the distance is important. Uh, you want to make sure that everything's in the picture. Things like connectivity. Uh, right now, there's a big uh, noise about all kinds of IP standards. Fortunately, if you combine with uh, mobile viewpoint, you don't need to care about that because they take care of that. Um, and I think for the, the combination between um, uh, Avonlick and mobile viewpoints from an interoperability perspective, basically our uh, commitment is, is that if there are any issues with the camera in combination with the system, we will fix that. Uh, and, and you can get support from, uh, from both companies on, uh, on the cameras. Uh, more and more companies are looking at content security as well within the mobile viewpoint platform that's already taken care of. But in general, for streaming, the content security is important, especially if it's sensitive uh, content. Think about medical type content and all those kind of things. Security there is a, a topic to look for. Um, in general, the room lighting, just to, um, um, to kind of talk a little bit about that when you look at PTZ cameras. 
Um, a broadcast camera typically has a relatively big sensor. A PTZ camera has a smaller sensor. Uh, but uh, broadcast cameras also assume a lot of light is available where, where there is being recorded. Um, PTZ cameras can deal with a, a, a pretty big variety of lighting conditions. Uh, and of course, those are completely configurable. Uh, you, can, uh, you can also set those to your, uh, to your own liking. Uh, they're completely uh, definable uh, within our cameras. Um, but you can see, and I'm just, this is a tip, this is a picture out of actually a previous presentation I did, but you can see there's definitely different lighting conditions, right? So uh, keep that in mind uh, when, when selecting PTZ cameras. One of the things that we're seeing um, uh, is, is um, that um, somebody would sit somewhere where in the back of the room, there's actually a window. And depending on the amount of light that's coming in from that window, that could create uh, problems when you're in automatic mode with PTZ cameras, right? Because it's going to try to make a, a picture uh, or the, the best out of the full picture that it's actually seeing. And then we've got a mode built in, which is called backlight compensation. Basically, it would compensate for the backlight coming into the room and make sure that the talent is still... Um, uh, um, um, yeah, still in the in the picture in in, in a good way. Um, we also have automatic white balance modes, which basically means that the camera is going to try to make the best white balance based on what it's seeing. But you also have manual control over that with our cameras. Um, one of the things, which is just a general thing for PTZ cameras, right? There's always a range. Like some some manufacturers will have like five and 10, 12, 20, 30 times zoom cameras. Um, the thing to remember there is always select the one that is required for the venue that you're putting the camera. So in a trolley live, it's pretty much set. Uh, but in a studio setting, just look at the distance between the cameras and the talent and select the camera that is the best because it's very simple. Uh, 30 times zoom lens has more elements in the actual lens, which basically means is that there's going to be less light on the sensor. So there is a chance that you'll get a little bit higher noise. Uh, if you select the 20 or 12 times zoom, uh, you get uh, a better light sensitivity. So always just select the camera that you need. Um, I think for Trolley Live, uh, very much the 20 times zoom is is kind of the, the most flexi flexible one because you're never going to know what the distance is going to be in the field. Uh, but if it's a studio application, then it's going to be a little bit easier to select the right one. Uh, of course, the distance, this is pretty straightforward, right? Um, uh, in this scenario, uh, you're seeing a stu more studio type setup where you can go with 12 or 20 times. And here there's a bigger studio setup. Uh, if you want to do more shots, if you want to have more flexibility, a uh, 30 time zoom can uh, easily uh, uh, yeah, create more shots. Uh, and again, um, we always recommend to select the appropriate lens in combination with your application. But for Trolley Live, 20 or 12 times zoom uh, is, uh, is going to be the most flexible one because there's a range between the completely zoomed in and zoomed out picture, of course. Um, just wanted to kind of quickly mention uh, the uh, connectivity. Um, I know connectivity is being taken care of uh, by Bonewall Viewpoint in most of the, uh, the installations. Um, uh, a couple of things that are interesting about our cameras uh, is that all the outputs are actually active at the same time. Um, uh, so we have IP output, of course. Uh, we've got IP streaming outputs, PoE for one wire solutions, but we also have 3G SDI and HDMI outputs. Uh, one of the things you can think of with HDMI output is it could be for confidence monitoring um, on site while the actual signal is being generated over IP or SDI feeding into the mobile uh, viewpoint uh, encoders. Um, uh, the system control is there on serial and IP. Uh, so that's all, uh, that's all there. Uh, and like I said, PoE uh, allows for one wire type uh, solutions uh, in certain use cases, which is depending on the scenario that you and that you have, and of course, the system that you're going to be integrating with. Um, in general, the way we look at product development is that we, uh, we try to put as much functionality inside of a single camera. We uh, are typically only one part of a system. Uh, we are uh, the camera solution, and then we always need to integrate with a third-party solution, in this case, the Mobile Viewpoint vPilot or Trolley Live or any of the other Mobile Viewpoint solutions. Um, so that's why we make uh, our products very flexible uh, and, and try to create as much uh, outputs uh, on there uh, as possible. Uh, here's actually the back of one of our cameras. You can see the SDI, HDMI, uh, the LAN port for control. We have the RS-485 serial control, but also balanced audio input, which 
uh, is handled by the mobile viewpoint uh, system, but uh, we do have those uh, to make it uh, flexible also for future uh, updates and all that kind of stuff. Um, one thing I wanted to touch on is uh, resolution. A uh, question that we're, uh, we're getting is, um, is a lot of the time is like, do I need to start looking at a 4K camera uh, or is full HD still gonna be sufficient? Um, well, the, the question there is always going to be, uh, and in any scenario, uh, is going to be what are you actually going to be doing with your content, right? Um, if the distribution method of your content is going to be uh, a wireless connectivity, for instance, uh, yes, it's going to move to uh, 4K, but with Full HD, you're still going to have a lot more cost-effective solutions. 4K PTZ cameras still have, um, uh, there's still a big price difference. A lot of them are still 4K 30, which... I would think questionable because 30 frames per second is just not going to cut it for us um, for most of the applications. So uh, you really will need to look at a 4K 60 PTZ camera and then you'll find that there's pretty big price offset between full HD solutions and um, uh, 4K 60 solutions. So uh, keep that in mind. Um, um, like I said, um, there, is a, there is a price difference between that. And the other thing is also a 4K sensor does require more light to actually fall onto the sensor itself. Uh, so typically you'll end up with a bigger form factor, uh, so a larger camera. And then if you look at things like Trolley Live, right, it needs to, be, it needs to stay compact. So for the time being, uh, going with full HD cameras will definitely be my recommendation. Uh, and it will definitely, be, definitely suffice uh, for most of the applications anyway. Uh, we are, however, working on a 4K60 camera, which is expected by the end of 2020. Uh, we've, we've waited for manufacturing a camera like this because we didn't believe in 4K30, uh, adding a lot of value to our, for our customers. Uh, so that's why we are a little bit later uh, and uh, we'll be developing a 4K60 camera, uh, which is going to be expected by the end of the year. Um, this is just to give you a little bit of an idea on our product portfolio. I'm going to uh, browse through this relatively quick. We have, a, uh, we have a wide range of markets that we actually supply to. But if you look at the, um, uh, the broadcast type applications in combination with mobile viewpoint, um, uh, the CM70 series is probably the series to look at. Uh, offers a lot of input output flexibility. Uh, is the best camera out of this lineup as well. Uh, and uh, matches most of the applications that, uh, that, you, would, that you would come across. So uh, just a quick overview on that. Um, and then I just want to kind of round up. Uh, PTZ cameras, they offer great value for money. Um, uh, currently, there's a huge increase in streaming applications for corporate event streaming. You name it, everybody is going online right now. Um, and the great thing about PTZ cameras is that the remote control options provide central control. So I can imagine with the, uh, the platform that Mobile Viewpoint has is that you can actually control that from the platform side, uh, which takes a lot of the technology burden away from the talent on site. Um, and I think that's going to become more and more important moving forward. Uh, PTZ cameras have an easy way of recalling presets. So you can easily just kind of go to a predefined uh, scenario. Uh, and like I mentioned, we offer 1080p60 cameras with HDMI, SDI, and IP stream output, um, uh, which will be combined with the mobile viewpoint encoders. Uh, the HDMI side of our cameras uh, can always be used for other applications. So it could be used for confidence monitoring, all that kind of stuff. Um, and we offer white balance modes, uh, which are automatic, which is the easiest way, uh, but there's also manual control for that as well. Um, and yeah, the best thing is, is that the Avonic uh, 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 cameras are, are being used inside of uh, Trolley Live and, uh, and with the V-Pilot uh, studio solution that we're actually looking at uh, with Michelle and, and Mark right now. So, um, so I think that, that it's a very strong combination uh, between the Avonic cameras and the mobile viewpoint uh, solution. Um, so that kind of concludes my little overview. Uh, I didn't want to look too much into uh, the products in detail uh, because ultimately most of, the, uh, most of the smart stuff is done on the mobile viewpoint side uh, in the combined uh, solution. Uh, but hopefully this gave a little bit of an insight. Thank, thank you so yeah, much, Steve. Oh. Yeah, that, that was super interesting. And it, I mean, one of the big attractions for us using Avonic, I mean, it's, it's fabulous technology, but actually the pricing is, is very compelling too. And if you are interested in pricing, then naturally, you know, contact us. Um, I'll be giving my uh, email address at the end. Um, now's the time for the sort of Q&A session as well. Um, so I'm just going to click on the Q&A box. 
Um, first question, NDI protocol. Stephen, do you, do you support NDI within your camera? Uh, we're not, not right now. Um, we've uh, we've actually had discussions with uh, NewTek very early on, I think when they just launched the uh, NDI protocol. Um, back then, because we were mostly active in the Pro-AV space, which is mostly fixed installations, we didn't see uh, the value because it's like a one-time configuration. Um, uh, but we've seen uh, more and more demand for it. So right now we're actually uh, finalizing the, I would say the, the legal agreements uh, with NewTek. And I would expect that we launch a product within two to three months that would have the NDI protocol um, enabled and it will be NDI HX. So not the uh, original NDI, but the compressed version of NDI. I understand. And I think Michelle, with, with, our, with Charlie Live and our decoder end, we could support NDI as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the debonding side of the system, we can already create an NDI stream or an SDI stream. Uh, so that, that, that on that end, it's already solved. And I assume, uh, Stephen, that it's a software upgrade to go to NDI. Do you need to do it in a different hardware platform? Well, it's going to be it's going to be different hardware, and the reason why we're doing that is because otherwise uh, our customers will need to be forced to buy that license online from a third party. Uh, we don't want to do that, so uh, we're going to be okay, we're going to yes, be creating a separate separate uh, separate SKU, basically separate separate product ID for that. Okay, great. And uh, Nicholas has asked a second question: camera control for grading. Is that is that something feasible with you, Stephen? Well, that's that's it's a, it's a it's a it's a good question because it, it it kind of explains the positioning between Avonic cameras and, for instance, uh, Panasonic. Um, uh, there is a there is a price difference between the two cameras, so there is a difference in 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 quality, especially if you look at like the the, the eight thousand euro version combined with or compared to our uh, cameras. Um, uh, one of the things that we don't have is the uh, the color grading, right? So we don't have the shading capabilities and all that kind of stuff. It's uh, we do offer a color matrix. Uh, which offers a little bit of uh, control over the, 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 the little bit more in-depth uh, control over the color. So you can try to get them as close as you can, but we don't have like remote um, uh, shading panels and all that kind of stuff. That's really something if you, if you look at the applications, for instance, with, um, uh, with Trolley Live, right? Uh, that's not typically an application where you would be doing that because it's more replacing a webcam type solution uh, which is the alternative yeah. so so the, the pricing is going to be more uh, more important um, and uh, uh, we don't really chase like the high-end broadcast type applications uh, uh, it's really where you want a camera that provides um, a very good quality picture for a price point which makes it attractive for uh, uh, more price sensitive uh, solutions so it's 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 really it's really a fundamental thing uh, the color grading that if you want that then you need to go into then the higher range. You have to spend more money, Stephen. Right? Uh, I think it's very simple. If you want to have those kind of features, you need to buy the more expensive cameras, and they are about four Correct. to five times more expensive yeah. than this camera. And also, what we noticed ourselves that those expensive cameras uh, are really made for setup and not for transport. So we already had quite a lot of broken uh, cameras with the more expensive model. Well, the Avonix seems to be constructed such a way that you can easily ship them and they get out of the box without any problems. I can tell you long stories about uh, housings uh, getting loose. But the, the Avonix uh, is really fit for the bill, so to say. It's sturdy, it gives a good quality. Indeed, it has no color correction, but there's a lot of automatic stuff which you really need when you send it to a talent used by UPS. So uh, you don't want to have too much control. And uh, yeah, we think it, it meets, uh, yeah, as Steven said, it's very, it's very good in the space where it's meant for. So the, the better webcam and not per se the high-end broadcast. Okay. And there, there, there is, there is yeah. yeah, 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 but there is some color control in there, but not like the black pedestal and all that kind of stuff. That's, no. that's really, no. a, a really a higher, higher level camera. We, we did uh, open up uh, the color matrix feature in the CM70 line, uh, which gives, gives a little bit more control. Typically that's what, what's done in the, in, in actually in the production uh, stage. Uh, but it does give a little bit more control, but uh, yeah, it's not going to offer the same as you would get with a uh, higher end camera. Understood. Next question. Charlotte has asked if we can do a close up of the Troy Live because apparently oh, we had I the can presentation. Do this. Wait a minute. So actually, we, we, what we can do is we have an external camera here. We can just turn this on, perhaps, yes. and we can see this. So hopefully, that's a better view than we were showing before of the Troy Live. So obviously, the, the PTZ camera just pops out. We have this yeah, we can show it again. So this is how it down. falls in. And then if you want to open it up, 
you just slide those in and then so it's it's all self-contained remotely managed um obviously we can live stream over the lan or multiple uh, sim cards modular networks and at the receiving end we, we didn't really touch on that but again we're supporting full hd sdi workflows or if you want to create an ndi stream or an rtmp or an rtsp stream and the sim media. cards go here the sim cards are in the front there yeah so, yep yeah. And I see also saw a question about the audio input. So uh, this one has a separate audio input, but there is also an audio input available on the camera as a line input. So you can also directly connect your audio if you want to the camera. But uh, of course, we, we provide this pre-amplifier that you really can, uh, can control it. But the camera also has an audio input available. So uh, yeah, there's definitely no problem. Excellent. And uh, just for your information, I mentioned vPilot earlier, which is our automated studio. So behind here, just a quick look behind the scenes, we have a range of PTZ cameras and using our scanners on the top and we are AI technology. This is what's driving the whole uh, automated uh, studio setup. So again, no camera people, we can move around and the sensors on the top will follow us, and, and which kind of makes the, uh, the obviously the PT, that controls the PTZ cameras. The PTZ camera can ultimately follow us as well. But anyway, it's a quick look behind the scene. Thank you, Michelle. And uh, next question, what about the audio input to the camera? We've covered that as well. Um, Power over Ethernet, I see your question. Yes. Uh, the, the cameras from Avonic uh, support uh, Power over Ethernet. Uh, in this case, we just power it from the box itself. So this box has Power over battery or Power over a 220 volt, uh, 12 volt uh, converter uh, power supply. So this is not PoE, but the camera itself uh, is PoE. Yes. Right. I think one thing, uh, Michel, maybe to add is that actually, um, and, and you're not using the PoE part, but we actually with the cameras have a standard PoE, so not PoE plus, which makes a big difference in power consumption. So uh, the camera actually has a pretty low power consumption. So if you if yeah. you use the Trolley Live battery powered, it's going to give you more battery time uh, compared to most other cameras that use PoE plus. Because the reason the reason why they're using PoE plus is just because the cam the camera is, is is needs more power. Yeah. yeah, as I said, we, we really did select this, this specific camera for the trolley line because it has many uh, benefits, including also uh, power usage as you really can use it in a mobile environment. And of course, perhaps the quality is then perhaps lower, I don't know, but I think it really definitely meets the requirements of most of our customers we see until now. Absolutely. Great. Well, that sort of concludes our webinar, all the questions have been uh, answered. What I will say, if you do have any sort of follow-up questions, uh, our email address here is uh, sales at mobileviewpoint.com. If you're interested in anything we've said today or we want me to put you in touch with Stephen, then please just send us an email. We're happy to uh, pass on his details. Um, this is one of many webinars we're doing here at Mobile Viewpoint. We tend to do them every Tuesday, so uh, you're also very welcome to join our future ones. Um, if you want to sign up for our newsletter, just go to our website and we'll keep you informed about all our uh, webinars and everything else going on in the broadcast and specifically the Mobile Viewpoint world. Uh, and on that note, I think we're done. So I would just like to thank everyone for joining us this morning. And a big thank you to Stephen for, as our special guest this morning for joining us from Avonic. Um, and on that note, I'll just wish everybody well, stay safe, and until next time, thank you very much. Thank you, guys.